Let's discuss the Certified Kubernetes Administrator Program. Wow, yes, it is true. You can get certified in Kubernetes. And there's two certifications that I'm aware of at this point. The Certified Kubernetes Administrator, which uh, my reading suggests is the more difficult one. Then there is the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer, CCAD, offering as well. Um, and you'd think, oh, I'm not a developer, so uh, you know, if you're an infrastructure person following me, then you're, you, maybe you aren't a developer. If you think, oh, I'm not a developer, so I wouldn't need to do the CCAD, the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer Cert. My understanding, again, from reading is the, the CCAD is actually the easier one, and it's really intended for developer-minded people to understand Kubernetes infrastructure and how it works and how to take advantage of it and how to interact with it and so on. It's not like, it's a bunch of code um, and so on. My understanding is it's more about, uh, it's more about looking at Kubernetes as an application delivery pro, uh, uh, platform and if you're a developer, how to use it. So uh, what I've heard is people who do go all the way through with CKA, Certified Kubernetes Administrator, can will often do the additional study to pick up the pieces that they need for the application developer cert and add that to the mix as well. You know, we'll see. Um, I have begun taking a course in CKA, Certified Kubernetes Administrator. It is a course on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. If you were to join the Kubernetes Slack channel and join the CKA uh, channel within uh, the Kubernetes Slack, or CKA Prep, I think it's called, you'll run into a bunch of people who that is how they are preparing. They are using the Udemy course for their prep, and many people have used that course as their primary means of studying and are passing the exam. So what am I getting in this course? What is the Udemy CKA course offering? Well, first of all, what did it cost? I got it for 12 bucks around Christmas time. I think it lists for... 199 US dollars normally, um, but they seem to be specials on Udemy fairly constantly. So, you know, if you're budget bound and you don't want to drop 200 bucks on a course, yeah, well, wait a few minutes and you know, there'll be some special or another that comes up. I, again, I paid 12 bucks for it. Uh, the course is broken up into, I think, 14 or 15 sections. The first Nine sections are lecture paired with labs. Each section is something between, uh, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes, and maybe two and a half hours of lecture and, uh, and labs. Although, if you study like I do, which is to say you're, <laughs> you are ridiculous and dwell on every statement that the instructor makes and make notes and think it through and compare it to other things and make cross-references, which is what I do, it'll take you something like an hour to get through 15 or 20 minutes of lecture. That's about what I'm finding is how long it takes me. But I have pages and pages and pages of notes. I've been taking my notes in, um, in, in markdown format with a plain text editor and writing down all kinds of things. It's almost like I'm writing a blog post about whatever it is that the instructor is teaching. Um, I am also, at the same time I'm taking those notes from all the lectures, I uh, have a, a cheat sheet that I'm building, so to speak, that is, um, I wanted a list of command line commands and what they do, kind of a summary, and so all the cool commands that the instructor is showing as he's teaching something, Oh, if you want to stand up a, a new object in Kubernetes, you're going to do uh, kubectl, cube control. I don't know, K-U-B-E-C-T-L. You pronounce it however you want. I've heard everybody pronounce it in various ways. I heard the CNCF is now opinionated about how you pronounce certain things, so if I'm wrong, sorry, CNCF, I didn't read what I was supposed to pronounce it like, but I'm going to go with kubectl. Sure, let's do that. But the kubectl command is the thing I've been using almost constantly. If I wanted to build some artifact in Kubernetes, kubectl create dash f, and then I'm going to give it a, a YAML file as input, and it'll read the YAML and create the thing, whatever it is, create a pod or create a replica set or a deployment or 
uh, whatever else I might be creating based on that YAML definition file. Um, the course, uh, again, is a good mix of lecture and uh, and command line work. You don't have to have your own Kubernetes environment. They give you a Kubernetes environment that they spin up on the fly for you. They give you a lab environment that works right in your browser um, and is paired with a, a quiz that is actually checking to see what you're doing at the command line and verifying that your results are or are not correct. And the lab exercises come with, um, with hints. So if you really get stuck, you're not sure what to do, or maybe the way they want you to do it, you can, because there's, like everything in IT, there's more than one way to get things done. You can check that uh, hint and find out what the next place is to go. Um, this lab environment that they spin up is, is free. It's built in as part of the course. It's on a different site. It's not on a Udemy site. It's actually on CodeCloud, spelled with K's, K-O-D-E-K. L O U D, but what they do is they give you a coupon code if you're a class, if you're enrolled in the Udemy class, they give you a coupon code so you can set up your Code Cloud account, apply the coupon, and you don't have to pay anything to use all of the labs that are there. Um, okay, so that's the, the, the course is delivered as a video format. You can download everything from Udemy um, to your uh, iPad or iPhone. Um, or you can consume it via browser on the desktop. I've done a mix of all of those things depending on where I am at any given time. The instructor, he wastes no words is the way to put it. He doesn't say things and then repeat himself or anything like that. I mean, he's like, bang, this is the thing. These are the words I'm sharing with you. They go along with these bullet points on this animated slide and then he's done. Um, which isn't to say he's doing a bad job. He's doing a great job. It's absolutely spectacular. I find the most practiced instructors are like that. They don't waste a, a, a lot of words if they've delivered this content before. They know what to say, and they know how to deliver it in a timely fashion. Um, and this this instructor, he is he's great. He's very much like that, and I've gotten a lot of value out of it. Uh, the only caveat being, well, I got to back up sometimes because I'll be like making a note on the previous thing he said and then I'll miss the next thing he said because he goes right into the next thing. Rah! And then I <laughs> back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay, 15 seconds. Try that again. What did he say? Because there is nuance in certain of the words that he uses that matter. And so you really got to make sure you get it. It's like, oh, I didn't hear. He probably said X. And what you assume you heard might not be right. So, um, you know, yeah, you, you go back and make sure you got it. Make sure you've got it right. What uh, what he's saying, uh, again, he doesn't he doesn't waste any words uh, at all, and therefore you risk half paying attention. You know, you, if you do that, that's at your peril. The way this course is structured. Uh, okay, so that the first nine sections are lecture. I've gotten through the first four or five sections. I think I'm in the. I think I'm finishing up section four. I'm pretty close here, and I've been at it six to eight hours a day of um, digging through all of these, taking very detailed notes and doing all of the labs and making sure I understand exactly everything that's going on so far. So that is a very intense and focused style of study, not just, you know, in this one window, I'm going to be looking at Twitter, while in the other window, I'm playing a Udemy video talking about certified Kubernetes administrator. No, no, this is right, hardcore, let's get serious about this and try to get some work done sort of focus so it's, it's taken some time so i've got you know many more hours ahead of me to get through just to get through section nine which is the end of the lecturing after that section 10 if i remember right he has you go through kubernetes the hard way kubernetes the hard way is uh kelsey hightower's github project where he walks you through building um, a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. Now, if you just use Kelsey's GitHub project, that's going to walk you through doing it on GCP. So if you don't want to do it, like I have my own lab, I have my own you know, VMware uh, system. I can stand up, you know, an Ubuntu server quickly and then have a Kubernetes environment off and running in that quickly if I want to. That's the route I'm going to go. And the Kubernetes, the hard way flavor that 
uh, the Udemy course is giving you, from what I remember from the intro, is is that you can so that you can run Kubernetes on some flavor of bare metal. Um, wow, I mean, I'm running it in a VM, but essentially, right, just just dropping it onto a um, well, not bare metal. You know, I'm going to be dropping it onto some flavor of Linux uh, is where I'm going to be dropping my Ubuntu. Um, is where we're, uh, some flavor of Ubuntu is where I'm going to be dropping my Kubernetes. There we go. Words are hard. Uh, after that, after section 10, Kubernetes the hard way, you build that uh, cluster from scratch, and you learn your lessons there, and you, you, you lick your wounds, and then the next thing, sections like 11, 12, and 13 maybe? I don't know. I don't have the outline in front of me. I'm driving a car. Give me a break. Uh, it's mock exams where if you're trying to certify for, you know, you're trying to do CKA, then you can uh, go through these mock exams and see where you're at. And I, I was reading in some of the recent notes from the instructor that he's, I guess he recently added two of these mock exams and made them harder, trying to match the difficulty level of the actual exam, I guess. So if you're like, you like you really want to certify and, you know, that's a thing for you, um, you know, this feels like the course is, um, is maybe a good one for you, especially at the price. Now, I believe that what I've gotten so far from the instructor, it builds in a very natural way. So you start out talking about Kubernetes architecture. You learn what a node is, and you learn what a pod is, and then he kind of builds it up from there. And it, you're using the skills that you had to use, that you had to learn in a previous section to get through you know, the next uh, section. I've noticed in the lab exams, that he'll have you use a command that you used before, even though it wasn't directly applicable to the section. He'll say, hey, how many, like, just something like if you need to do a, a kube cuddle, get pods, because you need to know something about how many pods are running on the system. It may have very little to do with the rest of the actual lab, but he'll throw that in as a question to, to force you to think through, oh, what is that command? And I found that it's very good for reinforcing what you're learning as you go, meaning, this instructor gets it. He knows how to how to share information and how to you know, make sure that you're when when you need to. When this is a very command line oriented sort of exam. He's really trying to get those commands in your head. So I have nothing negative to say about uh, this course at all so far. Uh, the Udemy delivery system's been fine. I spent some of my study on connected to some very poor Wi-Fi and yeah, I. Didn't Really have a lot of trouble with it. Occasionally, it would block on me on the download, but for the most part, it just you know worked even in that environment. The labs worked just fine. Um, with like one exception, like one of the labs wouldn't launch because it was missing a description file or something. And I meant to, I actually, I meant to put an email into the instructor about that. I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, quality control of the whole is pretty pretty solid. Um, again, no no real complaints and structured well. So. I'll check in with you again when I get to the uh, the mock exams. I'm planning to go through those and see how that works out if uh, my schedule permits. I can't uh, can't promise that because I have things come up in my schedule sometimes that I wasn't expecting and I'm kind of stuck dealing with that. I don't have time necessarily to work on lab stuff, but you know, we'll see. But I'll, I'll let you know how that goes if I uh, if I remember once I finish the course do like a final review of it. A comment about the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam itself. It is administrated remotely. You do not have to go to a testing center. There are rules about you have to have a webcam and a clean desk and a bunch of other things because you are remotely proctored where someone's watching you as you take the exam. Um, and they are watching you. You have to you have to play by the rules because they, they don't want you to cheat. The exam is all performance-based as well. There's no multiple choice questions as I understand it. It's all just make these things happen within this Kubernetes cluster. And I haven't gotten so far to have a sense of, again, what the test is, you know, like what the nature of it is, but I can make some educated guesses. It's going to be a lot of command line stuff, a lot of standing up and tearing down, uh, security. Um, a lot of those things make sense to me as being performance-based things that are very easy to look at and evaluate because, hey, everything in Kubernetes is API-driven. So you want to make sure that the exam requirement was met, oh, you can just make API calls and certify pretty quickly that the student did or did not do what was asked. So I'm, uh, according to this grading, according to the CNCF website, 
you get your grade within like 36 hours, I believe, is their, what they're currently saying. So that implies that there's some human rating this thing. Um, and it's like a, a three-hour test. I believe it, you, get, you get three hours to take it. And it costs you $300 US. And you get two attempts for your 300 bucks. So if you fail it the first time, you can try it a second time uh, for your 300. And the passing score is 74%. So it's not that high. I mean, the test isn't cheap, but it's far from the most expensive uh, IT exam I've ever taken. Kubernetes exam kind of feels to me like, yeah, I should know when I'm in there, am I meeting what's being asked of me or am I not? Am I succeeding with what I've been told to do or am I not? Because it's like, like a lot of networking performance exams you can see, you can verify right at the CLI that you did or didn't do what was said and then patch it up. You can fix it. You can go in the YAML and destroy the thing you made if you screwed it up and then uh, fix your YAML spec file and then try it again. Um, you know, so it could come down to time if they're asking you to do too many things and you're fumbling around too much. Maybe you don't get it done and that hurts you. That's a, that's a possibility. Um, but I don't know. It feels attainable. It doesn't, and, and, and it kind of makes sense. You know, the CNCF needs people out there, boots on the ground, to be Kubernetes certified. And they're also supporting Kubernetes um, solution providers, I think they call them, which if you're going to be a Kubernetes solution provider, you need to have a certain number of Kubernetes, certified Kubernetes administrators on staff. I think three of them. Uh, so, you know, they want people to pass. They want people to be certified. And they're, they're, it feels like they're putting a cert exam together. That means if you're certified, you've got enough competency to kind of get the cluster up and running and maintained and secured and monitored and all of that. Um, and if you don't know the answer, you can find the answer. You, you've got That's what a 74% to me demonstrates. Maybe you're not, you don't have every command memorized off the top of your head, but you can, you can get it done. You can get it done. So I, you know, I like the program. I've always been a fan of performance-based tests as opposed to multiple choice tests. So yeah, I am pretty interested in that. And, um, you know, maybe I don't get through and pass it or whatever. I don't know. But I feel like, yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. I think I am going to give this a shot. At least for the experience of it, even if I'm, you know, then I find out I'm, I'm so far away, I just don't have the cycles to, to actually do the study and get it done fair enough. But, you know, yeah, I'll give it a shot and I'll, uh, I'll let you know.